Hi, it's Shannon here from houseimprovements.com and in this video today I want to show you how to install a uh, tub shower faucet using PEX piping. So uh, one of the first things you're going to need to know is what, what you're actually going to find in your box for your valve when you get it all home and, and uh, open. Basically you open up your box, you're going to have the valve itself. Now these I've added on so it'll just be threaded like this four ways. This, that'll be your valve that's in the wall. Your handle will be on there. There'll be this uh, spacer plate that'll mount on there as well. You may or may not need that every time and I'll, I'll explain that when we get to it. Uh, you're going to find a little bag of screws, miscellaneous parts and fittings. This will vary a little bit depending on the manufacturer but generally speaking this is what you're going to find. You're going to find a tub spout. So we got here we got the handle and the shower arm this will go up in the in the wall and it should be yeah, the shower head itself here as well uh, what did I miss so and then you'll have your discussion plate that goes on the wall when everything's done going to cover that back up so it doesn't get scratched and you'll have an instruction booklet and that's basically everything that you'll find in the package now things that you're going to have to purchase obviously is all the piping for in the wall in this case we're using PEX um, I recommend that you purchase these push fit type fittings to go on the valve itself so uh, there's there's all kinds of different uh, name brands, but basically they're a push connect fitting. So it's threaded on one end. In this case, it's a female thread going onto male threads of the valve. Uh, the odd time they are opposite. This might be female and you'll need a male. So you kind of got to open your box and check out the valve first. So it's threaded on one end to fit the valve and it's a push fit fitting on the other end to fit the uh, PEX piping. Okay, now you can get those in straights just like this is or they come in 90 degree bends as well. I don't have one here to show you, but it's just a 90. So depending on your situation, you might want 90s. And we can talk about that uh, when I get to putting the valve into. So you need those, you'll need some Teflon tape. Uh, you're gonna need a couple small crescent wrenches and you're gonna need a tool for cutting your PEX pipe. So so that's your, main, your basic valve. So this would be tub spout. This would be going up to the shower head, and this would be your cold water and hot water, hot on the left. The valve will be marked up in one, in one direction so that you know which way it goes. Okay, so that's your valve. Uh, something else that you're going to have to make up that doesn't come with the kit is for the tub spout. Uh, it's not advisable to use PEX for that, so you should make up a copper uh, fitting like this that'll basically it'll slide into this PEX fitting. So this fitting will accept copper or PEX and we have a video uh, dealing with push fit connectors if you want to see a little bit more about them. Uh, but in this case uh, it'll accept this hot half inch copper or half inch PEX so we can use the same fitting and this will be the tub spout when it's all pushed together. In your instruction book that you'll receive with your faucet it'll give you some uh, dimensions recommended dimensions as far as how high out of the tub for the for the valve the shower head and the tub spout um, honestly those could pretty much be anywhere you want the more critical one is the distance from the uh, center of tub spout or uh, yeah center of tub spout to center of valve like in this case they don't want it any less than six inches and no more than 11 inches and to be real honest I don't know what the difference makes but uh, I always try to stay within that margin there so but as far as the actual height of the valve and the height of the shower head it really doesn't matter I'm more concerned about keeping my tub spout I usually like to have it about six or eight inches above the edge of the tub and then that kind of sets out where my where my valves gonna be um, just while I'm talking about that the reason I I like my tub spout to be that high. Some people maybe don't like that. So my tub spout will be about this height. 
The reason for that is some of these tub spouts you need to get at this Allen key on the bottom, this Allen screw, to attach it to the pipe coming out of the wall. And if it's really down low here, it's a real pain in the butt to get your head down there and see what you're doing and operate the wrench and everything else. So I like to keep it up just a little bit higher. Gives you a little more room to work down there. I mean, I wouldn't put it up here or anything, but within six or eight inches, I like to have it from the tub edge. Okay. So I've kind of gone ahead and prepped a few things here, but I am going to discuss them so that we're, we all get on the same page. One of the main things you need to do is uh, decide on what your wall uh, is going to be comprised of here. You know, is this just going to be a fiberglass wall tub surround or is it going to be, uh, you know, half inch drywall or hardy board or curdy board or something with tile on top of it, which is what our case is. You need to know that because that determines your uh, placement of the valve in the wall as far, as far as how far in or out it is because this neck here needs to protrude far enough so that the handle goes on and everything works properly and it isn't rubbing against your finished surface. Okay, so the book, the manual really doesn't get really into detail on that but uh, basically this cover here slides on and it's got some some studs here that go against these plates or these ears and that sets your distance so in the book basically all they show you is if you're using a thin wall item like a fiberglass shower stall and we actually have a video installing this in one of those so you can reference to that but Basically what the book shows you is if, if your wall here is just going to be like fiberglass or acrylic, you need this face of this plate right behind that. Okay, so that'll be what your depth will be. When we're dealing with, I'm using going to use half inch curdy here and approximately three eighths or so worth of tiles and more, uh, mortar and everything. So I need this to project. This face here will be actually the face of my tile, my finished wall. Okay, now you've got a little bit of play and what I usually do is I put my hardware all on here and the handle and I have a look at how the handle is in relationship to how much of this stem is sticking out of the wall. Usually you've got about a quarter inch play one way or the other but it's, it's, you've got to take a bit of time and figure that all out so that uh, you don't get this too far in the wall. Um, it's not a huge deal if it's too far out but it does look a little funny so so you need to figure that all out and uh, get some kind of a board in there for a backer so that when you mount this valve, I'm just going to pull this off so you, it's easier to see. So when you mount this valve, you actually get the right depth right away. And there's no guessing. Okay, so it'll get mounted right on here. Okay, so that's, that's that part. Okay, so we got the camera angle hopefully a little better for you here. So like I said, you need to determine your depth depending on what your wall is here and get a piece of wood mounted in here so that you can mount this solidly to it. Okay. Uh, in our case, I got really lucky too. Another thing is I like to have the tub in place so I can directly get the center of the drain and everything. So everything lines up nice and it gives you your heights to work with and everything. So, uh, typically I like to have the drain all hooked up on the tub, but I got a little rush today to do this video so the drain isn't hooked up but ideally I like to have that hooked up so that I can water test this right after I'm done so so get your board in place so this depth is right uh, depending on your framing here you may you may actually have a stud in the way you might have to cut it right out and redo some framing so every situation is a little different I lucked out this happens to be center of tub is right up on this side of this this uh, two by six that's here in the wall so so then what I did is this was an existing plate and this is pretty typical to what you're going to find in a renovation. So what I did is once I had center figured out, I drilled a hole here because my spout for the tub is going to come down through there like that. So I got that hole all drilled. I also drilled my holes for my PEX piping coming up. My shutoff valves are down here. So I got that all lined up. I continued my center line of the tub all the way up. I put another block up top here 
This is where my uh, shower head fitting, you see it here? Again, it's a push connect uh, that goes on here. It's a 90 degree and it's got a threaded fitting here for the shower arm that'll come out of the wall. So I got my height figured out up here approximately and I roughly cut this to height so I can mount it all in once I have the valve in place. Okay, so I've kind of done some of these steps that are really going to vary depending on your situation so it's not that helpful for me to go through everything here and then your situation is completely different but the basics are just getting blocks in place with the right depth for the wall that you're using okay uh, so these these i've cut to length to fit down my valves they're not connected yet but to do that what i did is i uh, mounted my valve in place and before i put this push connect fitting on here I just set my pecs in place and then I went around the other side and I measured my pecs and cut them off to length okay and we'll we'll look at that around on the other side here in a few minutes so I kind of got that all ready I made these connections here with the pecs depending on your type of pecs you might have a different connection uh, for this type that's the Upro uh, Where's bow type connections? Um, we do have a video showing how to do that as well. So we'll try to put all the links maybe for to those videos in the description here. Uh, so I, I've skipped ahead a bunch of these steps just so that uh, this video isn't a mile long since we have this other information in other videos. Okay, so let's, uh, let's talk about the valve and putting the push connect fittings on it. So like I had mentioned, there are 90 degree fittings. So if I didn't have this 2x6 completely in the way, I mo most likely could have just had one of these fittings in a 90 degree and came straight up into it with the pipe. In this case, I had this wood to work around, so I kind of had to make it a little, uh, little differently with these 90s out here. Really doesn't matter. Whatever your situation is, that's how you do it. So these uh, push connects, the threaded fitting just works like any other, uh, any other fitting. You want to wrap the Teflon tape uh, in the uh, uh, what would be the clockwise position or clockwise rotation and I personally like to do about 10 wraps of Teflon tape some people say oh that's way too many but I don't have failures if I go that that far so so I'll just get those uh, roughly put on okay again going clockwise Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Just get them on there, finger tight. And that's where you're going to need the wrench just to tighten them up. I'm just going to double check these other ones that I did earlier. I can't remember if I got them tight. Looks like I maybe did. Okay, so I've got all of those on here, and I'm just about ready here to mount this in. In fact, I can mount this in. So, a lot of these valves are the basically the same kind of style. You're going to have two threaded holes here. Those are to mount your outer trim plate, your finished trim plate on. So make sure you don't drive a wood screw into those, or you're going to screw up the threads. And then there's two should be two mounting holes further back. And those are for the screw mounting uh, application. And just a, just a simple wood screw, deck screw, is all you really need here. Get it mounted up. I've got crosshairs here for my height and my vertical center. Don't over tighten because there's no real stop to it other than the very center on the back. So you kind of got to get both screws started. Hold it so you're nice and level and plumb. And then just snug each one up until the valve is sitting good and solid. And it's not tilted one way or the other because you've got a screw too tight. It kind of would be nice if they had a spacer behind those screw marks and then it you pretty much couldn't go wrong with it. but. Uh, 
just take your time, get a good eye on it, make sure that it's all uh, lining up properly. Now, because of my situation down below, I'm going to go around and insert my uh, these water lines in my valves down back here. Um, and then I'm going to be able to manipulate these and get them into place. I've actually got to cut these to length up here. But if I put these in first, I might not have the room to manipulate them down below. So uh, I'm going to do the valve first. So we'll, we'll switch the camera angle so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I've got uh, push fit type valves on here. So they're pushed onto the copper already, the existing copper that was there. I've got these PEX pipes that I was talking about before cut to length. And I've marked on them a one inch distance for the half inch PEX pipes. That's how far they should go into the, uh, into the push fit fittings so that you know that you have them in far enough. So I've got that all just marked. I'll try to keep my head out of the way. What am I hitting up here? Let's get it up a little bit. Get it started in there. Push it in there. There we go. So we're at that 7 8 to 1 inch uh, zone there, so we know that we got those in, leave the valves off. Okay, so we got that all hooked up below. Now, if I didn't have access like I do on the other side of this wall, what I would normally do is these PEX pipes will be hooked up maybe even before the tub's in place or below the floor or wherever I have access, and I'd leave them long. And then I'd do all this, these elbows or whatever I have to do right here where you can get at it. So obviously if you can't get at that uh, afterwards, then you're gonna have to have just some pipe stubbed out so that you're ready to go. And you can do all your cutting and fitting up here. I just kind of pre-fit a lot of stuff just so that it sped up the video a little bit. Okay, so I've got, I know this is the valve. I'm on center of my tub. I've got my height now determined. If, uh, if you mess up, and cut a pipe short or something, you may have to move your valve down half an inch or whatever, or maybe you've got to cut your pecs and extend it, but uh, try, to, try to be right the first time if you can. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna double check whether these are gonna, actually I can probably get that one in without shortening it. So I'm just gonna mark here for my depth so I know I've got it in enough. That's my hot. Line there, and I've got it in place. This one here, I'm definitely gonna have to shorten up a little bit. So I'll cut it here. In there, mark my depth. A lot of times I don't actually make that mark. I'll put my thumb at about the right distance I need and then push it in and just use my thumb as a gauge, but it's a good idea to put a mark there so you know what's going on. Okay, so we should be good there. Now we've got our, got our uh, hookup to the valve for our water supplies, and that's as simple as that. Okay, that's the nice thing about PEX. You got that little bit of flexibility to it that you can uh, work with. So, so we've got that. Now, the uh, tub connection that I made up before, like I said, uh, these guys recommend no more than 11 inches from the center of the valve and uh, no, no less than six, I think it was. I can't remember exactly. And what I've got made up here is about 10, 10 and a quarter inches. So I'm within what they spec. This one here, it's as simple as making up the joint. Uh, this distance here, depending on your tub spout, uh, what I like to do is leave this long because I can always cut it off. Some tub spouts are actually a threaded fitting. So if that's how yours is, uh, let me see this. If yours is a threaded fitting, and you can't use that copper like that. You could use PEX or copper from the valve down to this type of fitting. Okay, so this would be back mounted in the wall on a block of wood, and then you'll have a threaded nipple however long you need for your substrate and your 
and your uh, tub spout and everything. So that's just a different style that you see. A lot of times it's this type where it just slips onto a piece of copper and you tighten a, a, a little uh, stud clamp on the bottom. So, so I'm going to put this in. And again, I'm just going to hold my thumb at that kind of that one inch mark so I know I got that in there enough. And on these fittings, these pipes will rotate like that. Okay, so I just, when I put on my, uh, uh, in my case, my curdy board and my tile and everything, I just always make sure that this is straight out. And once, once you've got it through the hole, that keeps it rigid there as well. If you find that it's a little wobbly this way, and this one actually is, what I'll likely do is, I think this is too big, but what I'll, what I'll have to do after is cut a block of wood and put it in here behind there and maybe even put a, a copper clamp around it just so that it doesn't push in like that because it's kind of wobbly. So I will put a piece of block of wood in there and strengthen that up. It's a good idea because you get a bit, bit of play in these fittings because it's an O-ring that makes the seal. Okay, so that's that. I'm just going to turn it a little bit out of my way so I don't catch myself on it. We've mounted the valve. Now we can check this for length. And I've got an approximate height here that I'm hoping to achieve. So I'm just gonna hold that up there and go about an inch longer than where the top of the fitting is. And I'll cut that off and we should be good. Okay. So we've got our block up here that we're going to mount that to. This simply gets, again I'll use my thumb as my one inch marker. Push that in there and I'm going to mount that head up there. Now I recommend for these fittings here, like they've got three holes here for screws. Uh, a lot of times I used to use deck screws. Now the hole isn't it's just a straight through drilled hole. It's not, uh, you know, not countersunk in there or anything. And a deck screw will kind of chew into that and seems like it's tight, but over time it loosens up. So I've started using a pan head type screw. So it's a number eight with the pan head and this flat edge on the back just clamps nicely against there. And I find they, uh, they just stay good and solid forever. Where the other ones I find over time, if somebody's really monkeying around with the shower head all the time, that it will loosen up. You probably can't see what I'm exactly doing back here. I'm just getting lined up on my center mark. I'm getting my one screw in there. And then I just get it straightened out. I don't know, can you see that? Not really. I'm kind of set back a bit because I'm back about an inch and a half. This uh, fitting, so this fitting here, the position of it, what you want is basically so that it's not sticking through the finished surface that you're, uh, uh, you're going to have on here. If it's just acrylic or fiberglass tub surround or if it's drywall, whatever it is. So, so what I've done, I'm going to have half inch curdy backer on here, curdy board. And my tiles, I've projected this about a quarter inch past here, just so that it's sticking out a little bit through the curdy backer, but you don't want it to stick out through your tile or your fiberglass. Okay, so I've got that mounted there. That's good and strong. This hose here, you can see it's wobbly. There's some little clamps I'm gonna use. I'll just stick a couple clamps on that to keep it from flopping as the pressure changes when you're using it. This here is all gonna be good because I'm, I'm held pretty solid with these these uh, holes close by here so it can't really rattle around or anything so I'm all right there. I probably will mount a couple of clamps on the back side there where you've seen me sticking into the valves just to keep these. Well they're pretty solid too but I'll throw a clamp on them just to make sure they don't rattle around. So we've got that part done. Uh, this isn't over though. Uh, we're gonna continue on with this video once I have the finished wall on here and I'll show you how to put all the cover plates and everything like that on. So uh, we're going to cut away for a few days and come back and show you how to do this. Okay, so uh, tiling's all done here now and we can put on all the trim accessories and finish off the shower faucet. Um, so to start out with, you've got your, uh, your valve area there. 
some of the parts might be a little different, but most of them for single lever faucet are going to all be very similar. So you should have some kind of a trim ring that goes over there like that. Um, you're going to have a cover like this that's going to cover that hole. If it doesn't have some kind of gasket on the back, then run just a little bead of silicone around here where it'll be inside of this uh, covered by the cover. <coughs> Excuse me. So any water that gets in there, like behind here, uh, will hit that silicone little rim that you left here and just get around the hole and shed out the bottom. Don't, don't run it all the way around. I would just come down at least a little past halfway just getting some grout off there and uh, then any water that gets behind there will just follow that around and run right out the bottom so this one this one's got actually a pretty major seal in it so and getting these long screws lined up sometimes can be uh, half the battle so anyways get your trim on your ring on there slide this on and try to get your screw started So I haven't seen any that are any, ever any more than two screws to hold this cover on. You just want to suck it back so it matches up to the tile. This one's kind of flexible so it's not going to sit right perfectly flat, but that big rubber seal in there, kind of making it flex. And then uh, if yours is round, it really doesn't matter, but this one's kind of got a squared area to it, so just give it a little bit of a turn if it needs it to to uh, get lined up and then for this particular type they've got a few little pieces that fit together here and they uh, regulate the uh, the hot or cold or sorry how hot you can actually get the faucet so just check your instructions it's just a matter of uh, if you need it so it isn't so hot like at full blast to prevent scalding you can turn this little adapter to where you want it so that'll just take a bit of plan straight up and down will give it as hot a water as you can su supply to it so so those little pieces all go on this piece you may or may not have and that's what the the handle itself connects to and in your bag of goodies there'll be a screw to hold that black part on and all those little pieces together They've got a little bit of, usually have a little bit of, uh, this is the other one for the handle. Let me get it out of here. They usually have a little bit of thread lock on them. So once you thread it in there and, and that, you can uh, know that it's going to stay. Uh, what am I looking for? The handle. So this one uh, comes, these guys have an Allen wrench that fits this in the packaging. You may have to have your own. So this just slips onto that and this little Allen screw goes up in the bottom of it. Just turn it till it's snug. Okay, so that part's done. Now, uh, depending on your spout, there are certain spouts that you need a threaded nipple here and it's got to be a certain length out of the wall and all that your instructions will explain that if that's what you need this particular one just has a couple o-rings in there and it slides onto a piece of half inch copper pipe that's stubbed out of the wall um, now once i slide this on there what tightens it up is this little screw on the bottom and they don't for some reason include the allen wrench for this on here so just getting that ready and uh, now I've got my pipe coming through the wall and it's all crowded in sealed up but I still like to run just a little bit of silicone around there again like I would have if that top piece didn't have a seal uh, just just so it sheds water you know if, if that is a hole or whatever that you've got there so if you just run it around near the edge just acts as a bit of a dam to keep the doesn't have to be pretty just keeps sheds the water around there 
I, I prefer that than putting an ugly bead of silicone on the top edge of here against the tile. That's just going to look ugly and gross after a bit. So, Okay, so this one can just slide on. Get it started. Slide it back to there. Just get it looking straight up and down. And then tighten this up. And this is a bit of a pain, this little screw under here. But this system is way easier than the pipe thread one. Pipe thread one can be a real pain if you don't have it just perfectly the right length. My arm in the way. You can see we just recently grouted this shower and I haven't really cleaned it up so it's a bit of a mess here. Starting to snug up now. Just double check that that's sitting straight before you get it done up all the way. There, when it's on there, it shouldn't uh, shouldn't turn and twist. Okay, so that's it. If you prefer to, you can put a little bead of silicone around the top edge there. Just again to shed water. Okay, so I've got that. Now we're going to go up top and uh, do the shower arm. So on, oops, on this one, on this one, uh, the shower uh, pipe plumbing and everything is in the wall, as you've seen earlier. And uh, so this wall or this uh, arm is going to protrude through the wall. Okay. Um, you can tell, see on that elbow, one length is shorter than the other one. I honestly don't know if there's a right or a wrong way. Uh, most times I put the long piece into here. I just like there to be as much headroom above the shower uh, uh, head as, as possible. Not that this is going to make a big difference, but make sure you don't have any crud in the way up there. And uh, put seven or eight or so wraps of Teflon tape around the threads there and put the tape on so that uh, so when I'm putting the tape on I'm holding this in my left hand and I'd have the tape here and I'd be wrapping clockwise as, as the camera's looking at that so that when I'm threading this into the hole it's helping snug that tape around the uh, the pipe itself if I had it on the other way and I'm starting to turn this into the fitting on the wall it's wanting to kind of unravel the tape, so. Okay, so get it started in there. Probably, I don't want to overdo it. That's probably going to be enough. I don't think I can, no, I can't get another turn out of it, so. That should be good there. And uh, you've got, you'll have a little chrome ring like this that's going to slide on over that. But you can see they're kind of, they don't fit super tight. So again, you need a little, little bit of silicone on the wall there. What do I do with that? I would normally use clear, but I didn't have any clear with me. Um, so you want to put a pretty good blob on there. And this is kind of cupped out too. So you need a pretty good couple blobs on there. And once it sets up, it holds it in place. So this is nothing really to do with keeping water out of that hole. If you're getting water in that, this hole way up here, then you're having a pretty crazy shower, or, in my opinion. Okay, so you want a pretty generous goop of stuff around there, so it's gonna make contact with this. Slide that in, oops, I got a little too crazy up there. Slide that in so it makes contact. Get rid of the silicone off your fingers. And once that dries, that'll just hold that in there from wobbling all over the place. Okay, so that's that part. Then uh, you probably are using the shower head that was in, in the box of the whole system that you bought, which is fine. If, uh, 
If you look in here and there's a rubber o-ring in there, way inside there, then you don't need Teflon tape out here. If there's no rubber o-ring, then you do need Teflon tape and I don't see like not an o-ring, it's a washer like on your garden hose for example, sort of that sort of thing. So I don't see anything out there, so I want to put some Teflon tape on here. And if you try to keep it down to the end so it doesn't show afterwards, hopefully. And most people think I'm pretty excessive with the Teflon tape, but I don't think you can really go wrong with going seven or eight wraps on there. I lost count. I'm not sure how many I did there. And while I've got it down, there is just a bit of a flat mark on there. So I like to get my crescent wrench. Oh, that one's going to be too small. Get my crescent wrench while I can, I've got it down here and I can see what I'm doing. Just get the crescent wrench set up to the right size to fit that. Now I can start to thread it on by hand. I can get it started. Oh, baby. I can't really see. I'm trying not to be in your way, but I'm going to have to be. Okay, so you can start it on by hand. Turn it as far as it'll go by hand. And then use your wrench and just snug it up. Now, in a lot of cases this stuff is plastic. Or it might be metal going onto plastic, so you need to be a little careful with it. So you don't overdo it. Right. Okay. There we go. Turn it so the name brand is able to be seen. That's just my OCD. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I can't remember for sure if the water shutoffs are turned on or not, but uh, we'll give it a whirl here and see if they are. I'm just make sure we're good. The reason I'm not running it into the tub is just because I've got this mess of grout in the way right now. Okay, so that seems to be all fine. If I didn't have this mess in the tub, what I'd also do is have stand outside the tub, get the, the unit running, and just check the shower too, but I'll have to do that here after I get things cleaned up a little bit. So as you can see, start to finish, uh, that's kind of what you're up against as far as uh, changing out your plumbing in the wall for a shower. Um, in most cases, you're gonna do that on a, when you're changing the whole shower walls and everything, but uh, it, it is possible to do without having the shower walls open, but it's a heck of a lot easier to do with it like this. Or you might even have the option of opening the back side and doing it from the other side of the wall, so. Okay, well, I think that pretty much does it. And uh, as always, please click the thumbs up there below if, if you could, uh, if you liked what we have here on houseimprovements.com. And uh, you can always leave a comment below this video. Um, if you have an actual question about what we did here or some other DIY project you got going on, you can go to the forum. That's the best place to post questions. Myself and some other guys are hanging out there all the time, so uh, we're usually pretty quick to get on answering uh, any situation you might have come across so and other than that we've got Facebook uh, Twitter and uh, if you want to help even more you can uh, check out our patreon link that we've got in the description below and uh, support us that way appreciate you watching and keep tuned in to houseimprovements.com